I'm going to proceed on the idea that everybody at least understands how to construct a label or a mirror. Labels, it seems, it sounds, it looks, you see me sound, you look. A mirror is a repetition of the last one to three words ish or s specific selection. Once you get good at the last one or three words, you start picking one to three words out of different portions of the conversation of the mirror. So everybody's going to pick two things they're passionate about. Everybody's going to pick two things they're passionate about. It doesn't matter what those things are. They could be food. They could be dogs. They could be bunny rabbits. I know you're passionate about bunny rabbits. Doesn't matter what those two things are. You will pair up with someone next to you. One of you will be the talker, the other person will be the negotiator. The negotiator is asked two what questions. What are you passionate about? I'm passionate about puppies. What about puppies makes you passionate? That's your second what question. Every response from the negotiator from that point on is a label or a mirror only. It's not, oh, I had puppies growing up. I set it on fire. You know, whatever you did when you were a kid. No sharing of common experiences. Because that's not a label or a mirror. And then when we pair you up and you start out, one of you is a negotiator and the other is a talker, stay in role until we ask you to switch out. If someone is not particularly comfortable with the skills yet and they say, okay, I did this long enough, now let's talk about your passion. Now we don't want you to do that. We have a very specific sequence going here. These are our reps. How many reps to get a skill? 63. These are our reps. This is the low stakes practice. This is the no stakes practice. Small stakes practice for high stakes results. Here's what it'll look like. Brandon's gonna be the negotiator and Derek is gonna be the talker. So at the beginning you're gonna be able to ask two questions to get you started and from there forward is gonna be only labels and mirrors. So after you label four, after I have done four or five labels with Derek, then we will start pointing to people in the room to continue the conversation with Derek. So once you get pointed at, you gotta come up with a label or mirror. A great way to get picked is to look away. <laughs> All right, so uh, two questions at the very beginning. First question, what's your passion? Uh, coaching basketball. Coaching basketball. And then second question, what about coaching basketball makes you passionate? Uh, it, it provides me an opportunity with providing a positive male role model in the lives of guys that don't have it. Guys that don't have it? <laughs> yeah, I, I, uh, the, coach, the uh, community that I coached in a couple of years ago was a, um, a, an immigrant community. Um, single parent homes, mostly led by women. Uh, a lot of times the guys that were on my team were the, were the oldest male in the house, so a lot of responsibility had been thrust upon them. And as a result, some of them, uh, straight off the straight and narrow, unless they were provided an opportunity to participate in organized sports, that's where I came in. It sounds like in a lot of ways these kids are kind of missing out on life. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I mean, I was in I was in their spot, so to speak, when I was coming up. I didn't. I grew up in a house that didn't have a father. Um, in fact, he could walk through those doors right now, and I wouldn't know it was him. That's how early in my life that he left. So I was raised by a a a mother who had a heart of gold, and she worked very hard, but she didn't. She couldn't provide me with that male influence that I needed. And, but by the grace of God, I could have gone elsewhere. Sounds like you learned how to be pretty self-sufficient at an early age. I had to, you had to grow up fast. And uh, the things that were out there that snatched me off the streets, figuratively speaking, have been multiplied tenfold now uh, with these guys. So I know that they're either gonna wind up dead, they're gonna wind up incarcerated, or they're gonna wind up like the next Shirley. Sounds like you really feel for the fact that what they're missing out on really isn't any fault of their own. It's not. 
And so for the two hours that I get them every day between the months of November and March, it provides me with an opportunity to um, provide them with some life skills that'll make them better men. Because I think as a, as a male adult, it's incumbent upon me to do that. Label or mirror. Label or mirror. I want you to say it looks like, it seems like, it sounds like, and then give me what it looks like, seems like, sounds like. Intuitively, you know what to say. Now I want to make you say it. It looks like this is really important. Yeah, it is important to me. Let's face it. These guys are going to get their life lessons from somewhere. And if they're not getting it from me, they're going to get it from somebody in the streets. And then the people in the streets are usually going to send them in the wrong direction. Direction. Label or mirror. Mirror. Wrong direction. Into the mic. Wrong direction? Yeah. So I mentioned earlier they could wind up incarcerated or they could wind up like Shirley. And as an adult, again, my job is to make sure that nobody else becomes a Shirley. Label or mirror? It sounds like Shirley's important to you. I, I, I wasn't following that part. I had a legitimate question. What, what do you mean when you say Shirley? I didn't ask you to ask a question. <laughs> I want you to label or mirror. Any question that you can ask can sound like Shirley? a mirror. Shirley? Great. Yeah, Shirley was a uh, young lady I met. She was seven years old at the time that I met her. And um, Shirley was a crack baby, which means when her mother was pregnant, she was continuing to ingest cocaine. Shirley was born addicted to cocaine. And she had this, the requisite uh, behavioral and cognitive issues that a baby addicted to cocaine would. So she was way behind in her development. They put her into foster care because the mother was not, the mother was not obviously competent to raise the child. So Shirley was put into foster care, and that's when I met her. Label and mirror. That, and you met her where? Not a question. Label and mirror. Any question that you can ask can be turned into a label. So it looks like, it seems like, it sounds like. Sounds like you had a great opportunity to, to, to run into this little girl at one time and it meant a lot to you. Subsequently, yeah, it, it was a great opportunity. At the time, I didn't see it as such. Because when I met her, her foster mother's boyfriend had taken the bottom end of a cane and shoved it in her mouth and broke her teeth out because she spilled toothpaste on the floor. And so when I think about my responsibility to the youth of today, it starts with how I saw Shirley the night that she was on the gurney in the hospital and I'm taking photographs of her injury. And this little girl that has had everything done to her is laying on the gurney showing me some cigarette burns on her forearm and she still had enough sunshine in her to, to smile. And I said, and I still have her picture on my desk with that smile. And I said, if this kid can go through all of that, she needs a fighter. And so my job is to fight for all the Shirley's of the world, label or mirror. It sounds like you believe this program can really make a difference in children's lives. Well, it's, it's a leap, but my basketball program by extension will lessen the opportunity for kids to fall through the cracks, either into jail or to have their lives impacted in a other negative ways. Now I'm going to stop there. You guys see how much information you can gather by just using labels and mirrors. If you will imagine the X that I stood on the floor represents I like coaching basketball, right? How far off of that X did you move me? Quite a bit. When I first said I like coaching basketball, figuratively or literally, some of you rolled your eyes and said, oh, another, another jockhead. Another guy who's going to start talking about the virtues of Steph Curry. Right? But what did you learn about me? Travis said, I grew up without a father. What else did you learn? Specifically, what did you learn? That I help youth. Good. What else did you learn? I have a very big heart. I have a very big heart. Do I sound like somebody you want to do business with? Absolutely. 
lot of behavioral things, how you respond to things. What do you mean? Uh, given a difficult situation, you took it and turned it into a positive. Good, good. What else did you learn? You want to be a role model and you want to give back. Want to give back. What else did you learn? Respect your mother. I respect my mother. What else? What inspired me, uh, Monica said. So the point is, you move me off the X, you know a lot about me. Character-wise, behavior-wise. How much information did you give me? How much do I know about you? Nothing. Just using labels and mirrors. That's how strong they work. That's how powerful they are. So that's what you guys are going to replicate in your one-to-ones.